All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's take a look at problem 94A. This has us doing fixed overhead variances. These for me are the most challenging ones to teach and I, I think students struggle with these the most because they're different, right? You get the hang of this AQA, PAQSP stuff and then this one, you don't do any of that. So it's just a little bit different. You gotta think differently and uh, it, it can be challenging. XYZ company manufactures tables. The company budgets fixed overhead to be $10,000 for the month of August. By the way, when I'm thinking about fixed overhead variances, on the top of my mind is predetermined overhead rate. That becomes my SP if we're thinking AQAP, AQ, AQ uh, SP, <laughs> that type of stuff. So because of that, I'm, I'm just thinking about that as I read the question. So again, the company budgets fixed overhead to be $10,000. That's my estimated overhead. So that's the numerator here of a predetermined overhead rate. And I'm going to divide that by the estimated overhead driver when we get to it. The company applies overhead costs to the jobs on the basis of direct labor hours. Okay, so I'm going to take estimated overhead divided by estimated direct labor hours. It'll be a number that'll serve us well. So if you're reading through one of these questions, think predetermined overhead rate for fixed overhead particularly is important. The company has the following direct labor standards. Uh, it expects each table will take two hours to make, and the company anticipates making a thousand tables. Direct labor workers are budgeted to work 2,000 hours during the month. There it is. There's our estimated labor hours. So we get a rate of $5 per direct labor hour. That's going to come in handy much later, but just a good thing to have in the back of our pocket. And uh, the other thing, it expects each table will take two hours. I always like to write this out as a number so I just don't lose sight of it later on. Two hours is how long a table takes to make. During August, the company produced 1,200 tables. And so these were all like standards up top. And we've got some actual data down below. Uh, made 1,200 tables and workers worked a total of 2,200 hours. Actual fixed overhead incurred was $10,500. Commute the company's fixed overhead budget and volume variances. Okay, so our fixed overhead budget variance is actually very easy to compute. I've just been hyping this up and I, I hope I haven't confused you too much already. The first variance and you'll see there's no AQAP, AQSP stuff here, although applied is kind of an SQSP calculation as it would have been in the past. The actual is always going to be generally a given number and it was given. Our actual fixed overhead was $10,500. Our budgeted fixed overhead was uh, right at the top $10,000 and those will generally be just given. So this becomes an easy variance where you go, okay, I budgeted 10,000, actually paid 10,500. This is $500 unfavorable. I paid more than I budgeted. Now the fixed overhead volume variance, I kind of want to explain it by giving you an example from my real life and then we'll come back to this. So I like to ski. I live in Canada and I live in a town that's near a ski resort. A uh, very lucky person. And to ski there costs $100 per day. But if you buy a pass, unlimited skiing costs $1,000. Unlimited ski pass. So I ski enough that I, I like to buy the pass. So I buy the unlimited ski pass. Now I'll never forget one year, it was the year I had a baby, I bought the ski pass and I hardly went skiing at all. I went like three times. So at the end of the year, I'm like tallying up my money. I go, oh my God, I paid a thousand dollars for this ski pass that I used three times. This is clearly something unfavorable. I could have just bought the pass for a hundred bucks a day, done that three times, spent $300. I spent a thousand dollars instead. In that scenario, 
I said to myself, this is a $700 unfavorable variance. Um, in normal years, maybe I use the past 30 times, in which case I think, yeah, I'm getting great value out of my pass. Now, I'm not saving any actual money. I'm not getting any actual money, but there's sort of a good feeling with using your fixed cost assets or fixed costs using them efficiently right you make more stuff you use the ski pass more often or our, our company was budgeted to make a thousand tables we made 1200 well guess what those fixed costs spread out over more volume this is good for the company so this volume variance just think of it this way if we make more tables than we had planned we were planning on a thousand tables we made 1200 this will automatically be favorable we used our fixed assets for more stuff than what we were planning on so it's sort of the ski pass example i went skiing more times than i would have thought or than you know than the pass warranted i the thing paid for itself well our fixed assets can do the same thing our fixed costs can do the same thing where we spread them out over more volume and that's why this is a going to be a favorable volume variance but let's get to it it's applied overhead SQ times SP, we have our SP, $5. Our SQ, we have to say, okay, given the actual level of output, just as we compute SQ for anything else, given the actual level of output, given the actual 1,200 tables we made, how many hours should it have taken? Well, it should have taken two hours per table. So 1,200 tables got made times two hours per table. It should have taken 2,400 hours. Okay, that's our SQ. So 2,400 hours times that predetermined overhead rate of $5 an hour gives us 12,000. Now compared to our budget, again, we would have thought this would cost us 12,000. It didn't cost us 12,000, only budgeted for 10,000 and cost, cost us 1,500. But the difference here is 2,000 and it is a very much a favorable volume variant. So I hope the computation was clear. I hope the reasoning for why the volume variance is so favorable is clear. We made more tables than we had budgeted. We got a volume discount basically, right? You make more, your fixed costs spread out over more units. That's good for, uh, uh, good for your company. I hope this video was good for you. And I, if it was, I hope you'll be willing to punch a couple of buttons on my behalf. Unless you've already hit subscribe, then don't hit it because that'll unsubscribe you. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.